want to welcome you to another exciting review or exciting episode of Pens in Use. This week I'm a little bit dimly lit. Uh, last night I got up kind of in the dark and forgot that my lights were were uh, set up ahead of time, and knocked one over and broke the bulb. So I only have half the lighting, but uh, looking on the iPad, it's a little flat, but I think it'll work. So we'll just go with it. So the pens I have in use this week, still my Lingmo Lorelei, and I'm. And I want to thank, or Laura Lee, Laura Lee, I had a few people correct, correct my pronunciation. Um, apparently Laura Lee is like a mermaid or something, so that's kind of cool. It gives me a new image on it. It's also a woman's name in Australia, so thank you to all those of you who, whoops, <laughs> who gave me some ideas. Um, okay, I don't really remember inking this pen up. And it feels dry. Yeah, okay. <laughs> no ink in that pen, so I don't really know how it got there. Uh, this is uh, a wall, no, yeah, a wall ever sharp Skyliner 50. It's a modern recreation of a vintage pen. Not sure why it's there. Maybe I was going to ink it up and then didn't. Uh, Kaigaloo 316 with a Knox nib, a Tulip Click. Uh, Jinhao 992, right? Yes, no, sorry, Kaigaloo, no, oh, wow, Lingmo Lorelei, Lorelei, um, with a special nib on it now. These two are Jinhao 992s, which, there's a reason they're there, and actually here's another one. And I'll cover them when I get to them. This one's empty for reasons. Uh, SK... And I can't remember the name of this pen. SKBF20 uh, Penton thingy. Uh, Platinum President. Parker Jotter. Do you like New Moon? Rexall Monogram. A Majestic and a Visconti Homo Sapiens. Um, I recorded a bunch of reviews and I was going to record more, which is part of why I reset up everything. And then I knocked over the light, so this video, when I edit it, is going to tell me whether to film the reviews or wait till I get a new bulb in the mail. So, we'll see. Alright, so let's look at how these guys write. And I have to be careful because they've got a specific way I want to arrange these. So let's move these guys down here. Alright, so today is August 11th. Let's use the lovely Laura Lee. And let's zoom in a bit. I think my writing sample actually right now is looking better with only one light. Make of that what you will. This is a beautiful finish. I think I said before this will be going into my permanent collection. You know, it's a cartridge converter pen, but it's it's beautiful. Um, I read about this on uh, FPN, and now I see it that there's a plastic sleeve around it. I uh, when I have emptied this pen out, I will investigate that. But uh, anyway, beautiful pen. And it writes pretty well. I mean, don't look for your um, flex or an exotic nib or anything, but if you're looking for de very good writing, here you are. And in it's an, in an attractive package. Um, this is a pigmented ink, and I'm struggling really hard to remind myself I really don't need another ink, because I love the looks of that ink. But again beautiful pen. I actually had a comment about precious resins and uh, I misunderstood the intent. I thought the person was saying that you need precious resins and this is cheap junk, but they're actually saying the opposite. I mean, here it is on a very low cost pen, a very attractive finish and a good quality writer. You know, ask me in a few years how it holds up, but for now, I'm very happy with it. Uh, there are some very good low-cost pens out there, and I thank the Chinese manufacturers especially for bringing them to the market so that we can have new people enter the fountain pen world. Now, I wasn't so impressed with its uh, demonstrator version. It's constructed a little differently, and it 
doesn't do anything for me. Um, it's kind of like the Jinhao 992. Now, I've got an empty one here. I filmed a review of it, uh, and then it was pointed out to me, because I was complaining about I had ink here, and I had ink all over the cartridge and in the barrel. I, In fact, I think that was last week I was complaining about that. So I had already filmed the review, so I added an addendum. The nib unit actually unscrews from the grip section. Okay, now the lighting's not so great. So, uh, that's helpful. Very helpful. If you, uh... The problem was that it had come slightly unscrewed, and then I couldn't... You know, then it was leaking everywhere. Alright, now, uh... I was actually sent two of those. Actually, I was sent a whole package of them by a gentleman in Texas. His idea was that I give them away to students, which uh, I'm not sure how I will work that out yet, but I will. He also sent me two that he had eyedroppered. Now, Chris Rap 52 has uh, several videos on eyedroppering this pen. I tried eyedroppering, well, this one. You might have seen the stain right there in the silicon grease. This one, I was getting leakage out of this plug. So there's several solutions out there. This gentleman in Texas just filled the end with uh, some kind of silicon. I'm not sure exactly what. Uh, Chris Rap 52 has a different solution where he works more on the outside. So I don't have a clue what these inks are. Uh, he sent them, to, this gentleman, whoops, Jin Hao, sent them to me inked already. Uh, it looks like a fine point. So, a mystery purple ink. But you can see it writes really well. Here's another one. Also eyedropper without quite as much glue. That's actually a pretty attractive green there. Uh, the purple there I'm kind of ambivalent about, but I like this green. Let's just mess with the focus for a second. All right, now uh, one more. This is one of my experiments. This is um, on the Lingmo Laura Lee. I have that beautiful clear feed, which I said I'm going to put in my resin one, but I'm not there yet. I took a nib out of my Pilot, um, I think out of my Pilot Prayer. It's not going to stay here. I'm not terribly thrilled with the results, but this is a uh, another Lorelei Lingmo. I have a Pilot. I can't remember the size. It has a CM written on it, so I'll just go with that. Nib on it. And you can see you get some very good line variation because you know, that's what stubs do. And of course, I really like this ink. Um, this is a color I do not have, so I'm pretty sure down the road I will be purchasing a bottle of this. I mean, the most common ink you can imagine, but I just find it attractive. But uh, love the feed. The nib is actually behaving for this little writing session, but I've been finding it. This feed just does not keep up with this broader nib. I don't know why, but it doesn't. Um, I can't remember if I filmed a review on this or not yet. I know I haven't published it if I have. Nice little Indian pen that I found and added to an order, and then let sit for several months before I got brave enough to finally ink it up it's a tulip click it's a piston pen cost me I don't know six dollars and uh, I should mention that I think if no I have one pen here that has an ink that I actually own a bottle everything else you'll see here was a sample this is another pigmented ink uh, I don't have a lot of experiences with uh, pigmented ink so I thought it'd be kind of fun and I like the platinum brand I 
I haven't seen too many of their ink colors that thrill me, but uh, I do like the brand. Mm. So, there we go. Now, I just said I haven't seen too many of their ink colors that thrill me, and I'm about to contradict that because I forgot that Platinum makes the classic inks. So this is a Kaigalu. This was a gift to me. 316 and it has a Knox I'm told medium nib on it I didn't pull it out to look but that's what the person who gave it to me says and why well, make stuff like that up so this is a platinum classic citrus black and I was going to film the review with this ink in it that's what one of the reasons it's inked up um, but as I was writing with it on my uh, pens and use last week and I was reviewing the video, I thought, oh, I kind of, when I watch a review, I'd like to actually see it writing and uh, the ink takes a while, especially on the notebook that I use for my reviews, it takes a while to show up. So I thought, eh, no, <laughs> this is a neat ink though. So very sharp looking pen. It reminds me of my crocodile pen a lot. In fact, when I do review it, I'll show you that, but... Well, for now, we'll just set it aside. Um, this has been a fun one. I didn't care for it on the first inking, but I don't know. This is giving me an ink I'm starting to like, and I didn't like before. And I, the pen is really growing on me, even though it's just a, one of those ubiquitous Iridium Point nibs. It's not even Iridium Point Germany. But uh, it's growing on me. And I love, 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 love that clear feed. And this ink is gorgeous in that clear feed. So this is the pen whose name I can't remember, and I've heard SKB F20. I have heard that there's like a transition going on with the name. This, I, I had a sample of this a long time ago when the Edelstein inks first came out, uh, and I didn't like it then. But I just, for whatever reason, I purchased a new sample and I was just like, wow, <laughs> that is a pretty sharp looking ink. Uh, it's not the type of green I usually like. It's more of a blue green. But yet there are certain blue greens I like, which I'm going to save one for the very last pen of this review or of this video. Okay, once I'm sure whether this lighting will work, this is another review that's coming. This is a Rexall monogram, probably from the 1920s. This was, oh, let's see if I remember my details, made by the monogram pen company for Rexall drugs. So it would have been like a store brand fountain pen. Um, well, just a plain hard rubber lever filling pen. Uh, has a neat little locking mechanism on the lever which uh, with a full pen and a lever filler I'm probably not going to demonstrate, but it exists. This is a green of the type that I really do like. Uh, right now I wish I was not working under the constraints of writing under a camera. Because my handwriting would be a lot better. Wow, Edelstein. Uh, I actually had a troll on my channel recently who, who, among other things, was commenting on my handwriting. I don't usually care about trolls. You know, they'll come in, they'll post some comment. Oh, you sound like a fag. Or whatever. Oh, uh, you write like a pig. And Okay, then they're gone. Um, so, I don't worry about them. I don't usually reward them by interacting with them. Uh, this one posted a whole string of comments. Then they started going to other videos posting comment after comment. And I just like, you know, get a life, get out of your mom's basement, go out and see the sunlight. And so I blocked them and deleted them. I don't usually do that. I don't really get bothered. But when it goes to that degree, I am almost doing a service to them and protecting them from themselves. Uh, this is a Parker Jotter brand. I, I didn't know that Parker even still made this model in a fountain pen, but I ran into it in uh, 
staples when I was in Bismarck for my classes. And I had promised I wasn't going to buy any more pens. Well, I broke that twice because this is one I, I bought, although it was $15. I don't feel that bad. Um, not an amazing pen, but Parker makes reliable pens. So I may not be over the moon with how wonderful it is, but it's a good pen. It's reliable. Nothing too exciting to see, just like the Jotter ballpoint, which is a ballpoint that I do like. If I have to use a ballpoint, it will be a Parker Jotter, usually. All right, this is a Delike New Moon, which I guess is kind of like the Sailor Pro Gear. Um, about $100 cheaper. Because, no, <laughs> I didn't pay Sailor Pro Gear prices for this puppy. I like the color on it. Uh, it's an extra fine nib, which, you know, that's more my business type writing, and I have certain pens I like for my business type writing, but then it occurred to me, uh, correcting work on uh, the type of paper students give me, maybe we have a contender here. Maybe I'll get the platinum pigmented red, I'm told. Some schools, they have trouble with students will change, like, teacher's marks and grades and then go back and say, oh, look, you have it wrong in the grade book. I've never run into that, but, you know, I guess if I ever do, I could get pigmented red and solve the problem. Or use pigmented blue. That looks enough different from student ink. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is a review I will be doing soon once I decide if I like the lighting on this with this broken lamp but anyway this is a majestic fountain pen i've heard i've been suggested that it is not bakelite which is the claim i made last week and i on reflection i went back to the buyer and looked at the listing and no they weren't listing it as bakelite they were listing it as lucite which is a plastic that came out and was used in some fountain pens uh, it was suggested to me last week that it could be celluloid i honestly don't smell any camphor but as old as this pen is I might not anyway but I it's very subjective but I just don't it doesn't feel like celluloid either way I think it's beautiful it's not that thrilling of a nib it actually came with a pencil I think I have it laying here yeah I do You know, not a particularly thrilling pencil, but pencil nonetheless. Um, yeah. I don't do mechanical pencils. I never have, so uh, I'll probably never use it, but there it is. So it's a Majestic, and the ink in it is Pelican. 4001. Dark Green, which is another green that I really like. Um, I need another bottle of ink like I need a hole in the head, but it's attractive. Two more to go. I uh, gave you a little update about this pen last week. I will say, filling it out of this Visconti ink pot definitely gives it a lot more ink than filling it from a bottle. Um... Make of that what you will. It's one of my disappointments as I got to know it was uh, how little ink it fell, held. And it is a wet writer. I mean, this is Lamy Black ink. This is not an ink that's known for its sheen. But I was looking at some, some stuff I was writing with this last night. And it's reflecting on my uh, lamp. So, yeah, definitely has a, not a beautiful sheen, but a sheen because it's laying down the ink so thick. So, a wet pen. Not the easiest to clean out either. So, I don't know. It's, I still like it. I'm not in a hurry to buy another Visconti, though. I There were a couple I liked. There was one that was... Long, long ago, they had like a Visconti Opera Elements Air. I thought, gorgeous. And then I put off buying it because it was so expensive. And then they 
discontinued that model and I just well oh well and every time I saw one come up like on eBay or something I'm like, oh want but then I talk myself out of it again I just I don't feel like I've missed out on anything very pretty I I'll grant you that but I don't know I've been reading about Visconti and I just pretty pens I like the Saturno even though it didn't look very Saturny um, there, there's this Visconti Divina Desert Springs, which is discontinued also, which is gorgeous. But I just can't talk myself into a Visconti, even one of the cheaper ones. Like, I like that Van Gogh Sunflowers. But, uh, ah, I'd rather spend my money elsewhere. And now I'm on a hiatus anyway, so. This one, I, is, I said I bought two pens, broke the hiatus. The other one, $15. I didn't feel guilty. This one I do feel a little guilty about. I spent my hard-earned YouTube ad sponsor earnings to buy this pen. But boy, is this pen fun. I ran it dry uh, early this week. I saw now uh, Stephen Brown finally put up a review of this. So now there's two reviews of this pen out there. Um, Fig Boot on Pens has the other one. Um, I think I will be adding a third review to that very soon. Because I, I my rule is two fills. And this is two fills. Uh, so it's a broad... I had it ground by uh, Dan Smith to a cursive italic. Uh, in a large part because of that... Uh, I always get the name wrong. Swan Maybe Todd that I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. I uh, loved that cursive italic nib on that. So I wanted another one. And this is a cursive italic. Which I did a close up of it last week. So I'll spare you this week. Uh, the ink here is one of my absolute favorites. And yeah, it's another blue green color. It actually looks a lot like the Pelican Edelstein green. Or sorry, Jade. <laughs> Deatrementis uh, Mint Turquoise. The guy that uh, makes the Deatrementis inks is actually a German chemist. And uh, I find uh, the inks he makes are very high quality and reliable. I, you, know, the, you know what their traits are going to be and they all act the same. Uh, a little wetter and more likely to bleed than some brands, but he has some nice colors. And the bottles just feel very high quality. I like them. Uh, this pen is a little bit bigger around. I don't have one here than a 3776. Very high quality feel in the hand. It is cartridge converter, which disappoints some people. Um, because of the metal, you're not going to eyedropper it. But I just like it. Feels good in my hand. It's not so thick. I feel like I'm holding a carrot. It's just a very nice pen. So those are the pens I have in use. Uh, school, I have one more week off and then school starts. I don't have to work the day of the eclipse because school starts the very next day. Um, if I weren't having to go to school the very next day, I think I would drive down to Nebraska and get into the path of the 100% eclipse. But because I do have to get up early for school the next day, I just thought, oh, let's, let's not be stupid. <laughs> so I... Uh, We'll be in my yard with viewers and such. I'm uh, making some pinhole viewers. And maybe I'll show you some of that later. So I'm very excited about the eclipse. I, uh, 2044, I'm right in the path of, a, of an eclipse. So that'll be fun. And, uh, well, if I'm still around then, which I plan to be, you, you know where I'll be. <laughs> so uh, I thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.